Hi Chris here. Um, in this video I want to talk about uh, macronutrients and micronutrients. Um, a lot of the diets and uh, fads out there within nutrition are mainly composed about uh, a proportion of that diet or that fad diet or that nutrition. Uh, the amount of protein, fat and carbohydrate is within that diet, um, which are macronutrients. And there's a lot of emphasis on the macronutrients within the diet. Um, I personally feel that we need to be uh, focusing more on micronutrients compared to macronutrients. I think there's too much uh, focus and emphasis on uh, uh, macronutrients. Uh, don't get me wrong, macronutrients are important in getting the right ratio for a particular individual because everybody is an individual. There's no one diet for everyone. Uh, some people will do well on a very high protein diet, eating more um, animal source products um, as well as getting uh, vegetable and vegan protein as well. Um, and some people will do better more on a high carbohydrate diet. And when I talk about carbohydrates and that emphasis, I'm talking about um, vegetables. Uh, so you know, somebody will do better on a vegan or vegetarian diet than somebody may be doing animal. Everyone is an individual and everyone um, a, a different proportion of protein, fats, the carbohydrates will work different for everyone. Um, so I don't want to go too much into the macronutrient part of the whole thing. I think, I think generally we can all agree um, that the research is showing that you know, any processed food or processed carbohydrate is um, causing health concerns and health problems. Um, so, yeah, obviously we need our carbohydrates from vegetables in particular, and a little bit of fruit. Uh, I think, yeah, if we eat too much fruit, we can get into problems as well with too much sugar. And some of these fruits that we see, uh, that we get from conventional supermarkets are hybridized and not in the original kind of heirloom state. So, um, and, you know, seedless fruits and so on. So we can get into problems there. But vegetables are a great source of carbohydrate and uh, certain grains as well, um, uh, seed, seed like grains uh, like quinoa and um, amaranth and particular things like that. So, um, and also fat is, uh, we're finding is an essential component. Obviously these are essential fatty acids that we need in our, need in our diet. And there's also essential amino acids which make up proteins that we, we grow up require as well. Um, so yeah, fats are, are vital. Um, I'm a big uh, fan and uh, proponent of fats uh, for energy source instead of going to um, uh, certain uh, glucose type of carbohydrates. Um, yeah, we're not we're kind of escaping that roller coaster ride of our blood sugar levels uh, when we're using fat as an energy source. Um, and I like to you know, use that analogy of uh, uh, you know once you get you know, starting a fire is the big log that you put on the fire that burns slowly for a long period of time that is essentially fat uh, and where you know, the kindling and the paper that we put in the start that burns off very quickly is kind of um, these forms of carbohydrate that I'm mentioning uh, with obviously the exception of uh, vegetables so that's the component uh, and a lot of people I think there's too much emphasis on protein out there too um, I think a lot of people are kind of curbing uh, the cravings for carbohydrates with uh, replacing it with uh, excess protein. I really think um, we need to be upping the fat part of that component and reducing the protein a little bit because we can get into problems if we go too high on one particular component of the macronutrient range, especially protein. I think um, we can really ramp it up with fat and you'll actually find out if you eat the right types of fats that you find in nature, you actually lose weight because you'll use that as an energy source. You don't hold on to that. Remember the body only holds on to the things that it can't utilize and a lot of these processed foods which come from the carbohydrate component of macronutrients uh, are causing problems because of that. We're storing uh, things that we're not able to break down and we store it as fat. So that's the macronutrients. I think we need to emphasize more on micronutrients. And micronutrients, um, you know, there's anywhere from up to 72 to 84, some people are saying, of trace minerals. Um, and they come into the micronutrient range. So anywhere from magnesium, calcium to trace elements such as uh, chromium, uh, vanadium, and those sorts of things. 
these are vital because our body requires them all. Um, they're called trace minerals because they, we need them in smaller amounts, but that doesn't mean they're not as important. Uh, we only need small amounts to do effectively the jobs that the body requires to do. And remember, the body will function well when it has the environment and has the tools and the sources to do its job properly. And to do its job properly, it needs all these trace minerals. It needs the micronutrients. And why I say the micronutrients is more important is the fact that a lot of the foods that a majority of people are eating are from the supermarket. And the majority of those conventional foods were grown in soil that only had three minerals in it. They used the fertilizer NPK, which is nitrogen, uh, phosphorus, and potassium. So that's only three minerals. Yes, we may say that, okay, three minerals were able to grow that plant, but that doesn't mean, you know, we see people out in public that, you know, like, that are doing okay. You know, they may not be diseased at this point, eating foods like that, but we're talking about how vital a human being can be, uh, and if you want optimal performance, you want the body to be working optimally, So, and it works optimally with all micronutrients and uh, for a long period of time, so the body can do its job and repair any damage that occurs that we get from other environmental sources and even for the things that we're eating and drinking. So, um, where we get these micronutrients from if we're not getting them from conventional produce? Another good reason to maybe go go organic if you can. Uh, I know organic is a lot more expensive. Um, but organic, uh, the topsoil, the re, um, renewing the topsoil better, not just using NPK, there's usually a lot more uh, minerals within the topsoil with the growing organic uh, produce. Uh, even better than organic is growing your own food because then you have control of the environment and what you're putting into the soil. Um, and you can use, you know, obviously uh, all scraps and stuff that you're, um, of, of food that you're buying, you can concentrate, concentrate that down into compost and then put that uh, into, back into the soil. Uh, so you're getting a broad spectrum of minerals for those plants to uh, absorb and then we can uh, absorb those minerals from the plants that we obtain from our garden. Um, also rock dust um, is a great source because they're collectively concentrating certain different types of, uh, types of rocks in uh, soil um, which uh, have uh, numerous, all these trace minerals in it. But we can't consume the rock, but rocks because we can't, it's not bioavailable to us, but it's bioavailable to the plants. And then when the plants absorb it, then we eat the plants and we get it that way. Just like, you know, the animals are, uh, eating, um, if they're grass-fed, you know, because grasses absorb all nutrients, all these trace uh, uh, minerals, that's why wheatgrass and certain barley grasses are not a great mineral supplement in some way because they're absorbing all the nutrients out of the soil if the soil has those minerals in it to start with. Uh, so, you know, all these, um, that's why we, you're always looking for grass-fed animals because if the animals are eating grass, then that uptaking all those trace minerals into their tissue and then we eat the, the tissue of the animal and we absorb it in, bi uh, in a bioavailable way. So, um... So that's another way of doing it. We can also take a, a, a mineral drop supplement, which uh, I really recommend is CMD, which is Concentrated Mineral Drops. And it's got 72 uh, plus um, essential kind of um, trace minerals within it. Uh, one of the main minerals in it is magnesium, which a majority of us are deficient in. So that's a, a great mineral to uptake just alone from that supplement. Um, but you're also getting a numerous amount of uh, trace minerals that you won't be getting from uh, conventional uh, foods that you get from the supermarket. Another great couple of sources are uh, uh, superfoods and herbs, because uh, herbs are a wild plants. Even you know our conventional herbs like uh, mint, um, parsley, thyme, all these things <coughs> are wild, are, are essentially wild herbs. Uh, and wild herbs will have an affinity to absorb more minerals out of the soil. And, um, and also wild herbs that you can get as well. Um, things, um, uh, certain roots absorb minerals really well, so uh, kuma is a great um, root uh, type of vegetable. Uh, things like ginger, turmeric, 
uh, those sorts of things are great as well. Uh, also superfoods um, that you're getting from exotic places, um, things like cacao, uh, acai, goji berry, um, algaes because they come from the sea because uh, every known mineral comes from the sea so it's a great source of getting uh, some of these essential trace minerals because they're also coming from soils uh, from the top of the Andes like uh, with a superfood marker absorbing a topsoil that has uh, got all the trace minerals still in it um, so areas where topsoil hasn't been depleted so anyway I wanted to do this video just the fact that uh, if, any, if you want to take out anything out of this video it's just the fact don't focus so much on you know, uh, macronutrients you know, I'm seeing so many people out there at the moment they're just focusing on consuming so much protein and protein and protein um, <clears throat> they're doing a great service to their body in the fact that they're starting to stay away from certain carbohydrate and processed carbohydrate that's causing problems but you want to go, don't want to go too far the other way and consume too much protein because I think people are, are kind of one are forgetting about the fat and I think fat is a, an important component to a diet and a fuel source um, so I would really lower down a protein for for majority of people again you want to experiment because everyone is different but uh, fat is a very important component I think increasing the fat and maybe reducing the protein content a bit and also having a um, uh, awareness that we need to be really looking at trace minerals here and um, looking for better sources of food other than conventional supermarket food because we're only getting three minerals there. So uh, thanks for watching again and listening. Put a comment down, ask any questions that you have um, and you go to my website truelyholistic.net if you'd like to do a nutritional consult or energy work or um, just have a chat about setting up a lifestyle program for you. Um, thanks for listening. Bye.